This week on ANN, more than 200,000 Adventist youth mobilized to help reduce the spread of the Zika virus in Brazil. A new president is elected for a flagship Seventh-day Adventist educational institution in the United States. And Southern Adventist University responds to racially charged anonymous comments posted on a social media app during a worship service on campus. These stories and more coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, hundreds of thousands of Adventist members in the nation of Brazil are participating in ongoing campaigns to help decrease the spread of the Zika virus. The Zika virus has been declared as a global public health emergency that may be linked to thousands of babies born with underdeveloped brains in Brazil. The virus is transmitted through mosquitoes or unprotected sex with an infected partner. To help address the public health emergency, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Brazil recently launched the Zika Project. The project includes a public awareness initiative that offers seminars for residents to learn more information about the virus. Organizers say the public awareness drive started with 200,000 students from Adventist schools in the nation. The goal, they say, is to attract at least 400,000 additional Adventist members. Students are currently developing extracurricular activities that use the arts, internet, and public discussions to educate residents about Zika prevention. Students have also created a website for the public with practical information about the virus. Throughout the nation, Adventist youth are participating in various activities to address the pandemic, including distributing pamphlets about how to fight mosquitoes at home and also spraying mosquito repellent on willing passers-by. Some even stand at traffic lights while wearing mosquito costumes and holding posters with health tips. Later this month, Pathfinders and other Adventist young people will begin implementing community projects to help eradicate the virus and also inform residents about the risks of stagnant water and uncollected garbage. Earlier this month, a new president was chosen for one of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's flagship educational institutions. The Board of Trustees for Andrews University in the U.S. State of Michigan elected Andrea Luxton to serve the sixth president of the university. Luxton replaces Niels Eric Andreasen, who was retiring after serving Andrews University as its president for 22 years. For more on Luxton's election, Andrews University sent this report. In August, Andrews University President Niles Eric Andreasen announced his retirement effectively at the end of his term in June 2016. Then, February 29, 2016, the Andrews University Board of Trustees met to assess the final two candidates to fill the presidential position, and after several hours of prayerful discussion, they selected Andrea Luxton, current university provost. I've always thought, dreamt, imagined education. You know, when I was four, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. And, you know, it's, it's been from then onwards, I, I, that's been part of my DNA. We have to create some pathways uh, that are flexible, that are attractive. You know, Andrews has been given the name, the flagship institution, and other places will answer back sometimes, really, what about us? Uh, but I actually want to say, I still think that is true. Um, I think the, the rich heritage that Andrews has of being someone connected to the world um, is very important. I think some of the programs we offer here, particularly the graduate programs, are, are really stellar, really outstanding. I do think a uh, woman's style of leadership is probably uh, somewhat different. Um, and I think that is important. And I think it's important to have teams of males and females together. I think that's, uh, that, that diversity enriches leadership, enriches the church. I've been completely overwhelmed by the huge amount of support that I've received. There's a lot of prayers out there on my behalf, a lot of good wishes, uh, and I, I need that. I'm really honored to have accepted the position as president of Andrews University. Uh, there are lots of possibilities, lots of potential ahead, and I see Andrews University continuing to embrace and engage with the global church, the church in North America, its local communities, and I look forward to partnering with everyone in making that a reality. I think there's a wonderful future ahead um, as we pray together and talk together and work together. I'm Alexander Thomas, reporting for ANN. Administrative leaders and students of Southern Adventist University recently responded to a series of racially charged anonymous comments that were shared on a social media app during a Black History Month program on its campus. 
On February 26, some of the program's attendees took to an app called Yik Yak and left racist comments during a Vespers event organized by the university's Black Christian Union. The Yik Yak app allows users to have anonymous conversations with other users within a five-mile radius. News of the offensive comments traveled beyond the U.S. state of Tennessee, where Southern is located, and captured the attention of Adventist members across the country. The university released a statement saying it was, quote, appalled and deeply saddened by the hurtful, insensitive comments regarding race that were expressed on social media in our community on Friday night, February 26th. Southern's mission includes nurturing Christ-likeness in our students. The statement went on to say, quote, Christ lifted up every race and welcomed all who would come into the community of believers. Those who hide behind anonymity to spread hate and ignorance are not representative of Southern's values, end quote. The university is also taking measures to uncover the users behind the anonymous comments. Southern's administrators even took further action by banning the usage of the Yik Yak app on campus. University leaders also took the time to meet with the leaders of the university's Black Christian Union after the incident. The Republic of Fiji is still recovering from last month's cyclone Winston, which was the largest storm ever recorded in the nation's history. The storm caused more than $470 million worth of damage, killed more than 44 people, and destroyed more than 18,000 homes and buildings. Since the storm struck on February 22, the Adventist Development Relief Agency has mobilized efforts to distribute items to displaced and affected residents. ADRA workers have given families hygienic kits, including water purification tablets, first aid kits, sanitary pads, and antibacterial soap. Families have also received food through ADRA's efforts. ADRA New Zealand prepared the following report about one man's journey toward recovery in the wake of Cyclone Winston. When Cyclone Winston tore through Fiji, it left a trail of destroyed houses, schools and crops. It was terrible, one of kind, I could say. it's. I've never experienced something so devastating as such. Now, this used to be our home and it's completely destroyed. But John's thankful it wasn't any worse. This is not too bad compared to those who've lost family members, you see. I mean, all these books and tables and stuff can be replaced. Those families who, who lost family members, and that's beyond repair. He says the community has many needs after this disaster. Uh, for me and my family, it'll be shelter. And uh, for the rest of the family uh, out here, it'll be uh, a gathered shelter too and, and food. Right now in Fiji, tens of thousands of people urgently need food, shelter and clean water. Adra is providing thousands of families with urgent food and hygiene kits. Your gift will help us reach more people like John. The Seventh-day Adventist Church's official insurance company announced that its chief executive officer and president will step down from his position on May 31, 2016. Robert Kite, who currently serves as the president and CEO of Adventist Risk Management Incorporated, has led the company since 2009. Under Kite's leadership, ARM and its affiliated GenCon insurance companies have expanded revenue by 24% to $85 million annually, showing increased service to Adventist church entities around the world. The company has grown internationally, expanding its business in Africa, Asia, and South America. Domestically, ARM's healthcare department saved $2 million after transitioning church employees in North America to a new healthcare plan. ARM has also seen an increase in diversity, with employees representing more than 20 nations, which created no majority ethnicity in the company. Kite said in his email to ARM employees, quote, As I look at the current status of ARM, I think ARM is situated for continued excellent service to the Adventist Church and has in place a great leadership team and committed talented employees to carry forward its mission. I feel the time is right to make this change, end quote. Kite has also 36 years of denominational service to the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. He previously served as president for Pacific Press Publishing and chief legal counsel for the world headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. After his tenure at ARM, Kite plans to pursue other business interests in the U.S. state of Idaho. Employees of the Adventist Development Relief Agency in Slovenia were recently acknowledged for their work of meeting the needs of migrating refugees in Europe. The team was given the National Award from Slovenia's Ministry of Defense and Civil Protection for their contribution during International Day of Civil Protection on March 1. 
Two days later, Adra Slovenia volunteers were also recognized for their outstanding service to the refugees. A Seventh-day Adventist school in Nicaragua was recently recognized as the first secondary school in the nation to integrate digital technology in its classrooms. Students at Colegio Vocacional Adventista de Nicaragua, or the Adventist Vocational School in Nicaragua, began using digital boards and tablets when its school year began earlier last month. The school's principal, Juan Guevara, said the project was implemented to improve the learning level of its fifth-year secondary students. He said, quote, we are entering a very special phase and we believe that these are powerful tools so that teaching can captivate our young students and they can discover the world. We know that this new academic field will bring growth because students are not here to pass a grade but to learn." End quote. Guevara says students have used the interactive boards for various subjects including math, history, and geography. According to Marvin Gomez, Associate Education Director for the Adventist Church in Nicaragua, the news has motivated other educational institutions throughout the Adventist schools in Nicaragua to begin planning and investing in technology for their school's curriculum. Tuesday, March 8, was recognized as International Women's Day, a day that's been observed since the early 1900s. This year's focus was on advocating for the acceleration of gender parity. The day was a time to celebrate the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women around the world. In honor of International Women's Day, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in South America sent this report. Have you ever read about the women in the Bible? Wives, mothers, judges, seamstresses, queens, princesses, women who left their mark in history and change the way we see the world. Captivating and influential women inspired change. Change of opinion, stigmas, and concepts. They showed that behind delicacy, there is strength, and behind frailty, there is courage. They showed what it means to be a woman, regardless of age, circumstances, or time period. You can also do anything you just need to replicate a small gesture that changed all of their lives. Coming up, Adventist humanitarians provide financial assistance to refugees living in Lebanon. But up next, the Adventist Church in East Central Africa advocates for immunizations for children in Ethiopia. May I work in with you, young fella? Yeah. Go for it. That's the way you do it. Got to put a little weight on it. But I'll put it back up here for you. Меня зовут Азаната, и я говорю по-русски. Есть так много замечательных видеофильмов, но так мало из них переводятся. Вы можете помочь. Join the Amara translation and caption team today. Amara is easy to learn and fun. You can volunteer in your free time. Join this community today and provide great content in your language. Welcome back. And now we have more news from our global church community. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in East Central Africa was recently a key participant in an international event to promote health care and immunizations for children in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The leader of the Adventist Church in Ethiopia, Tamasgan Bolti, gave a presentation that highlighted the church's commitment to education, health, and the prevention of disease. Attendees included executives from the World Health Organization and the Bill Gates Foundation. Attendees of the event discussed the reality of an estimated 1.5 million children who die every year from vaccine-preventable diseases. Philip Baptiste, assistant to the president for the Adventist Church's East Central Africa region, who also participated in the event, said the church is committed to increasing awareness about the importance of immunizations for children. The church also wants to continue educational efforts that will encourage healthy living and positive lifestyle choices. 
The nation of Lebanon has the highest population density of Syrian refugees who have fled their neighboring nation due to civil war. Many of the Syrian refugee families live in Beirut and its surrounding area. The region is known for having a high unemployment rate and a high cost of living. In 2014, 49% of registered Syrians in Lebanon lived in poverty. In 2015, the number shot up to 70%. The hardships among refugees and residents are especially felt during the winter, when the region experiences rain, cold, and snow. The winter months are a crucial time when families need additional funds to buy blankets, warm clothes, and fuel. However, many refugees lack the money to purchase those necessities. To address this need, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency International, as well as address offices in Canada, the Netherlands, Norway, and Switzerland, have given financial aid to refugees and residents in need since January. So far, ADRA has given $100 U.S. dollars a month to 216 Syrian and 54 Lebanese families in Beirut to help them survive the region's winter months. The monthly allowance is loaded onto an e-card. One family member is also given information on managing the family's budget. Families are also given brochures in the region's local language that explains how to use the e-card. One year ago, the South Pacific nation of Vanuatu was hit with one of the strongest storms ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere. Since then, ADRA has maintained a consistent presence in the nation as its work has continued to help residents return to a state of normalcy. ADRA New Zealand's International Program Director, Victoria Frey, has more. So Cyclone Pam was the most devastating storm that Vanuatu's ever had. Uh, huge winds, over 300 kilometre an hour winds, um, trees falling, heavy rain. For me, I'm quite familiar with the Vanuatu context. I go there quite a lot and I'm used to seeing what it's normally like. I was really struck by the fact that everything that's normally green is brown and there were just no leaves on any of the trees. It was like a big vacuum cleaner had come along and vacuumed up all the leaves. You just can't imagine the noise and, and fearsome effect that it would have had on those that were really bearing the brunt of it. I think that a lot of people knew the storm was coming and so they had actually taken quite um, good steps to prepare for that and that was reflected in the death toll as well, which was lower than it, it could have been. During the cyclone, over half the houses in Vanuatu were either damaged or destroyed, which had a really big impact on obviously shelter for families and also uh, food supply. Uh, gardens destroyed, flooding, erosion, which not only affected food supply but also later on affected the ability for people to sell crops from their garden for income. And then of course there was water supplies which were affected and um, you know access to water was reduced and access to safe drinking water as well. In Vanuatu, ADRA has a lot of water and sanitation projects and has done for a long time so we sent um, a team of people in to help respond and I was part of that team so I went in and worked with the local staff and also a lot of volunteers that were helping out. After the cyclone, ADRA provided water filters for emergency water supply, emergency food, um, particularly to those in evacuation centres, and also emergency jerry cans for water storage and soap and things like that. Um, ADRA also provided uh, support with carrying out assessments for the government so that we would know who was affected and where they were and what sort of issues they had. It takes a long time to recover after something as big as Cyclone Pam and ADRA's working not just in the immediate response but also in a longer term recovery. And we're working in villages to help with their water supply, so fixing up damaged water systems and also helping out with gardens that have been damaged by providing seeds and helping people to understand how to grow seeds quickly and also helping out with hygiene so that people don't forget those key messages like washing their hands and just remembering to stay healthy even when they're getting over something as big as the cyclone. 
Adra couldn't do any of the work that we do in Vanuatu without the support we have from here in New Zealand, through financial support and also through your prayers. Still to come, Tech Corner is back with some useful tips on creating podcasts. But up next, learn which diet can help lower your chances of getting a chronic disease. Peter and John were called in by the chief priests and elders about their preaching. They tried to defend their actions, but the leaders were very hard on them. They were commanded not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. After further threats, they let them go. Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said. <laughs> When we heard all this, we immediately raised our voices in prayer to God. The entire group prayed for Peter and John. We prayed for God to give boldness to these two humble servants. Such intense prayer I had not experienced for a long time. After we had prayed, suddenly the whole place was shaken. People were filled with the Holy Spirit, and Peter and John went out and gave witness with great power and grace. They witnessed throughout the land about the resurrection of their Savior. Welcome back. Researchers have discovered that a vegetarian diet can decrease your chance of developing chronic diseases. Learn more in this week's episode of Live It. Ever crave a juicy steak or tender serving of filet mignon? Well, you may be better off craving something other than red meat. A team of researchers at Loma Linda University Health have been investigating lifestyle and health for nearly 60 years in what's known as the Adventist Health Studies. What they've found is those who eat a vegetarian diet have a lower risk for chronic diseases, which ultimately translates into longer, healthier living. In our study, the vegetarians compared to the non-vegetarians do have a lower risk of chronic disease, a lower risk of high blood pressure, a lower risk of high cholesterol, a lower risk of diabetes, they're less obese, and a lower risk of dying from heart disease ultimately. The researchers recently discovered that vegetarians are 22% less likely to develop colorectal cancers, the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States. So how can you start eating a vegetarian diet and experience the lifestyle benefits? If giving up meat entirely is too much, why not reconsider how often you eat meat? For example, try eating only fish or eat other meats only once a week to experience similar health benefits associated with the vegetarian lifestyle. The second tip is to eat fewer refined foods like sugar, desserts, snack foods, and fast food meals. Instead, we should eat more whole grains and natural foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, and nuts. The closer you get to some kind of natural state, growing your own garden, shopping at a local farmer's market, that can be very helpful. If you commit to following these tips, you can enjoy the benefits of lowering your risk for chronic disease and living six to nine years longer. There is your tip for the day on how you can live healthier, longer. To find more about Live It, Loma Linda University Health's new online health show, as well as watch previous episodes, visit liveitlomalinda.org. For this week's Tech Corner, Brent Harding, web manager for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, shares how you can create podcast playlists. I love listening to podcasts. Whether I'm driving, walking, or washing the dishes, audio podcasts give my mind something to do and help me to pass the time. And while I subscribe to a wide array of different programs, sometimes I find audio shows that I just want to listen to one episode. That's where today's tech tip comes in. From time to time, I get links to programs I want to hear. Maybe it's a sermon or an episode of a radio show. Most of these programs offer podcasts I could subscribe to, but usually I just want to hear one episode. 
For years, I've used a service called HuffDuffer. The service is free, and once you register, you have a single podcast feed to subscribe to in your podcatcher of choice. Once you have your custom feed, just add a little bookmarklet to your browser and you're ready to go. Now, when someone sends you an episode of an audio program you want to listen to, just browse to the download page and hit the bookmarklet for Hut Duffer. You will be prompted to give your episode a title and it will be added to your feed. The service is free and gives you a great way to create a custom feed of just the audio you want to listen to. And finally, for today's program, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, learn about the beginnings of some of the denominations, health, and medical institutions. This week in Adventist history, we focus on the church's medical work. On March 6 in 1960, Central Texas Medical Center opened. It was a result of the reputation established by the Adventist-operated Menard Hospital and Retirement Home in Menard, Texas. Today, Central Texas Medical Center has 178 beds, and last year it treated 160,411 patients. On March 7, 1994, a new medical school opened at Universidad Adventista del Plata, or River Plate Adventist University in Argentina, becoming only the third medical school at a Seventh-day Adventist church institution. The first two were at Loma Linda University and Monte Morelos University. And on March 9, but 52 years earlier, in 1942, Hospital Adventista de San Paolo, or San Paolo Adventist Hospital, officially opened, with Dr. Galdino Nunes Vieira as its first medical director, and Frida Treves as the first director of nursing. Today, it's a 60-bed hospital that last year treated 82,920 patients. On March 10, 1962, in the West African country of Cameroon, a clinic opened in the city of Baturi, directed by Akamba Roger, a male nurse. The clinic had to close in 1987, but reopened in 1990, and in January 1991 became Hôpital Adventiste de Baturi, or Baturi Adventist Hospital, under the leadership of a missionary couple, Dr. Paul Georgia and his wife Ligia. And March 11, 1964, in Christchurch, New Zealand, saw the start of the first five-day plan to stop smoking program held in that country, less than 18 months after the World Church had approved the program. That was This Week in Seventh-day Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, join our global conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can connect with Adventists worldwide through more stories, photos, and videos. Visit Facebook slash Adventist News, Twitter at Adventist Church, and Instagram at Adventist Church. Our good news for this week comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 10. The passage says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care. <laughs>